My dad says that he's going to be all right. Lucky guy. The paper said he was doing over 80. And the other car looked like an accordion. What was the matter with him? Nothing. A few less beers wouldn't have fixed. Come off it, Hanson. You sure he was drinking? Yes, I'm sure. Think of that woman and her little boy. I can't get over it. I saw him dig out here yesterday, and now two people he's never even seen are dead. Hey, Joe, seen the paper? Yeah, I've seen it. He should have been killed. He wasn't looking for someone to run over. Not much difference driving when he's drunk. What's the matter, Joe? You got something against Eddie? Let's drop it. See you after basketball practice? Sure. See you later. On the 25th, Wednesday, we take on Regis High. Anyone who can't make practice on Tuesday? Me, coach. What's the problem? Miss Colson has me for remedial English. She'll let you make it up. <laughs> I guess you all know that Eddie won't be with us, at least not the first part of the season. He may not be able to play again until next year. It might be a good idea if the team visits him before our first game. Let him know we'll miss him. He's had a rough break. You always said you'd drop anyone and broke training. Eddie broke training and hurt a lot of innocent people besides. Oh, what do you mean? All right, quiet down. Joe. Eddie's having a rough time. If we want to buck Eddie up, just make us league champion. All right, let's play some basketball. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Ruth. How is practice? Pretty good. Okay. You walking this wild man home? Better take me along for protection. Who's going to protect me from you? I'll take care of him. Sure. Make sure he doesn't blow his top. I'll take care of him. Nothing I like better than looking after Joe Waldron. on your math project tonight. It's due tomorrow. I guess it'll be pretty good. Joe, you're feeling better now, aren't you, about Eddie? I guess so. It's just that anyone who drinks is asking for trouble. Eddie knows that as well as anyone. And I don't feel sorry for him. He's a murderer. And that's how he ought to be treated. But it was an accident. He had a choice whether he should drink or not. He had a choice whether to drive or not. But he didn't know what he was doing. You can't hold him responsible. But I do. That's what I'm talking about. Can't you see that? I guess I don't see, really. Joe, you can't change things overnight. Why not? If people would only try. I guess I'd better be going now. Can we go in and sit for a while? No. Mother's there. Would she mind? Well, no. It's just that I've got to help with dinner. Okay, she's your mother. Joe? Yeah? Don't be mad. See you tomorrow. Hi, Joe. Where have you been? I was over at Ruth's. Ruth Martin's? Now, Mother. How many roofs do I know? At least a hundred, it seems to me. Okay, I see what you mean. Where's Dad? We should be here any minute. Now, you keep out of there. I've got a good dinner coming. <laughs> All right. Hi, Joe. Hi, Dad. Good day. You know me, Joe. Hello, dear. Do you need dinner long enough for a drink? Everything's all set. Oh. You're feeling good. What happened? I made a deal on the Peters property. We signed the contract tomorrow. They've taken a 20-year lease. Oh. Now, how about a Waldron special to celebrate? Fine. Hmm? Now. One. 
two. And three. And the Waldron special. Uh -huh. Soup song. Vermouth. Uh, ah. A little lemon. Mm -hmm. Could we have dinner a little early tonight, Mom? I have to finish my math project. Oh, been just a little while, Joe. We're having a casserole that's already in the oven. Twenty-year lease. <laughs> ah, okay. Perfect. That's my girl. You always did appreciate my talents. <laughs> well, how's it going at school, Joe? Pretty good, Dad. Oh, you know Eddie Reinhardt, don't you, Joe? Yeah, he was in an accident last night. Mm. Oh, really, Joe? Was he a friend of yours? He was no friend of mine. We weren't in the same crowd. His father's a little shaken up. Apparently, the kid had a few beers. His parents thought they were going to a drive-in movie, but the next thing they know, they get a call from the hospital. Eddie was always bragging about his drinking. It caught up with him, that's all. Well, now, I remember my old beer-drinking crowd. <laughs> we talked a lot, but we were generally pretty careful. <laughs> we pulled some crazy stunts, but it was all part of growing up. Learning to live in a man's world. Learning to drink. Well, sure, sort of. You, you feel pretty strong about drinking, don't you, Joe? A liquor can be a pretty terrible thing when it gets out of control, but you've got to remember that for every drunk, there must be dozens of intelligent, sensible people who know how to control their drinking and enjoy it. It's good to take a drink and relax. When you're older, you'll learn to appreciate it more. Mm. Now, nah, don't get me wrong. I'd be just as happy if you never touched a drop. But a few drinks never hurt anyone as long as he knew what he was doing. How about a second, dear? Mm -hmm. Now, real alcoholics, and I've known a few, are pretty mixed up guys in the first place. They get into bars. And some don't have homes where they can relax, and their drinking gets out of hand. Mom, what about dinner? Just a few minutes, Joe. All right. I'll go see how it's coming. When I was overseas during the war, I used to have dinner with Italian families where everybody, even the kids, drank wine with their meal. Very few alcoholics over there because drinking was accepted as, as a part of family life. No, no, dear. That was a long time ago. Years and years ago when I was very, very much younger. <laughs> No, what I mean is, Joe, you've got to learn to relax a little. <laughs> now, I couldn't ask for a better kid. But, but, Joe, sometimes, sometimes I don't think you have as much fun as I did when I was your age. The trouble is, Joe, people have to learn to control their liquor. Well, anyway, anyway. We went up to this, this guy's apartment. It was Charlie's friend's place. And this was the night before the election. So we started talking about politics. Well, I told them right then, Dewey can't win. And I told them why. I knew he didn't have a chance. Tomorrow night, Truman will be in the White House. You wait and see. You never told me about this. Now, well, you, you listen and you'll see why. <laughs> Well, one of the fellows there said, would you bet $50 on that? And I said I would. And before you know it, everybody wanted to get in on it. In half an hour, I'd bet most of the down payment on the house. Oh. <laughs> well, when Truman got in, when Truman, what do you say, um, donned the mantle of history, is that it? Is that what? What the guy said on the radio, came from Illinois. Missouri. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Well, anyway, when Harry got in, I should have won a thousand dollars. And I asked Charlie whether I should collect. Whatever happened to Charlie's daughter? Who cares about Charlie's daughter? I'm telling you a story. She was very sweet, a very nice girl. Mm. 
Joe took her to a party. Hmm? Remember, Joe? She was very, very sweet. That was Mr. Morley's daughter. She's gone east to college. Maybe you're right. Well, anyway, Charlie said that all the guys had agreed that they weren't going to collect from me if I lost. They were going to go easy on me. But I said, oh, oh, no. A bet's a bet. I would have paid off. But Charlie said it would have broken you. And I said, if I am not worried about paying off, why should they be? <laughs> he couldn't answer that one. And he was one of the first ones who wanted to bet. <laughs> I didn't want the money anyway, really. <laughs> Mother! Yes, Joe? Could we please eat dinner? Oh, I forgot the oven. <laughs> Ah, don't worry, dear. I'm not too hungry. Oh! Huh? I should have turned it off. I just can't understand how I could have forgotten. Nah, don't cry, okay, dear. We can have a sandwich later on. I'm not very hungry anyway. Come on, let's go back into the living room. No. No, we, we should have dinner. I've got it. I'll go down to the corner and get a pizza. And then we can have it right here in the kitchen. <laughs> Dad. Yes, what is it, Joe? Are you going to drive? Well, I don't see any other way of getting down to the store. And no trains or planes in that direction. <laughs> oh. All right, Joe. Here are the keys. You drive the car. You can't be mad at the whole world. Try to convince people. Then, if you can't, let him go. Maybe that's okay for Eddie. But my folks... I can only take so many nights like last night. I just can't stand it. I can't let them go. Last night, all I wanted to do was get out of there. But I couldn't. I had to stay there to take care of them. My folks don't drink. They never have. Your mom and dad could see a doctor. I've heard about some pills. What about the AA or something? But they won't even admit they have a problem. When they're high is the only time I can show them what's happening. And then they don't care. The next morning, I want to forget about it as much as they do. The next night, it starts all over again. Why don't you talk it over with the coach? The coach? Sure, sure, he's a good guy. He won't tell anyone else an idea. I know he's okay. I'm sure he won't tell anyone. I guess that's about all. It sounds pretty simple, really. I don't want to waste your time. Have you ever thought that your parents might be sick? Think of alcoholism as a disease. It doesn't do any good to blame the alcoholic. Maybe he can't help what he does, any more than you can help getting a cold. I don't see what you mean. Somewhere along the line, there's a time when you can decide about drinking. There must be lots of times like that when you can take it or leave it before you begin to need it. Maybe mom and dad are sick, but I can't forget that they make up their own minds to be sick every time they take a drink. I can't give you all the answers, Joe, but I'll tell you this. You're not alone. Every kid in school has got to make his own choice about drinking. It's a problem for us teachers, too. Things like that accident of Eddie's. We've arranged to have a program for the seniors. Arranged to have an expert give us the facts on alcohol. The effects of drinking. Maybe it'll give us all some answers. Oh, Skinny, wait a minute. Hi, Ruth. Hi, have you think? No, why? I don't know why, really. It's just that he's been acting so strangely. I've even forgotten what it's like to see him smile. Well, I wouldn't be smiling much better if I had to face up with his problems. 
problem? I mean as folks. Going to a lecture on alcohol is one thing. Having your own folks mixed up in it is another. Oh. He didn't tell you? No. But I'm glad you told me. Oh, Joe, here we are. Now I've thrown a lot of statistics and scientific facts at you. Statistics and facts which clearly show the destructiveness of alcohol. Some people do not like statistics and facts when they are contrary to their particular own point of view. This reminds me of what an executive one time said to a salesman. My mind is made up. Don't confuse me with the facts. <laughs> However, this problem is individually and nationally a serious problem. It is the third or fourth public health problem in the United States today in regard to size. Most delinquency, broken homes, felonies are either a direct or an indirect result of drinking which costs the American public from 50 to 60 billions of dollars every year. It is estimated that for every dollar spent for an alcoholic beverage, five dollars are needed to repair the damages. Alcohol, even in small amounts, increases the accident rate, killing and maiming thousands all over the country. You've had a sad example of this right here in your own school recently. There is no getting away from it. Alcohol is a habit-forming drug that causes mental, moral, and physical deterioration, brings misery and suffering to the wife and children of the victim. I'm sure that some of you here in my audience today no loved ones who have become a victim to alcohol. Let us face it, there is no harmless alcoholic beverage. Beer, wine, rum, gin, whiskey, all of these contain alcohol. Now, <clears throat> what can we do about it? What can young people do about it? The answer is simple. Do not get started. Maybe I should go home now. You have to help your mother as usual. Now, Joe, why shouldn't I help my mother? I didn't mean you shouldn't. It's just that, well, I've never met your folks. I'm beginning to think there's something wrong with me. Ruth, Ruth, bring your friend in, won't you, please? I can't blame you, young man. You're Joe Walden. Yes, ma'am. Your father's not home yet. Won't you please come in? It's okay. I'd be glad to. Yes. Make yourself comfortable. Can I get you some ginger ale? Yes, please. Yes. Is this your father? Oh, yes. That was taken in front of the shop. But he doesn't get home till late, usually. There are a lot of television repairs and emergency calls to make. Here we are. Oh, please sit down. Oh, Ruth tells me you're on the basketball team. Yes, ma'am. I got my letter last year. Oh, good. Mr. Martin used to play. To hear him talk, you'd think the only thing he did at college was play basketball. It gets to be pretty important. Mm. I don't know how Ruth would have gotten through math this year without your help. Are you planning to be an engineer? Well, I... Hey, where is everybody? Well, what have we got here? A party? I've never been one to pass up a party. How are you, Mama? Oh, fine. Have a good day? Mm -hmm. Ruthie? Oh, my day at the store was terrible. See, I saw Pete. Oh. He looks horrible. I don't know what he's been doing to himself. Was this a conspiracy to prevent me from meeting this oh, young gentleman? I'm so sorry. This is Joe Waldron, dear. Joe Waldron? Yeah. Ruth told me all about you. Wasn't he the one that was High Point Man last week? I read in the papers. 22, 26, or something like that? 24. 
Well, I'll be darned. You know, basketball was my game back in college. I was the terror of the referee. Here, Mother, you take my glass. I'll go start dinner. Oh, Ruth, you stay here. I'll oh, do it. Oh, Mama, let her go. The practice will do her good. Huh, Joe? Yes, sir. Let me fix that one up for you, Mom. No, thanks. You know I won't drink it. Oh, come on now. Don't be a wet blanket. A man shouldn't drink alone, should he, Joe? Right? Right. See? Uh, if it's all right, I'll go help Ruth in the kitchen. All right. Can't say I blame you, Joe. Well, Mama, down the hatch. I don't know what to say, Joe. Sometimes he gets really bad. It's the same at my house. Both of mine. Skinny told me. Joe, what are we going to do? I guess it's like Dr. Ivy says. And the only guarantee against alcoholism as a cause of accidents and human misery is total abstinence. Each one of you can make up your own mind to leave it alone. We've got to make up our own minds. We can decide to leave it alone. Mm -hmm.